Join us as we delve into the remarkable journey of Paul McGrath, a name synonymous with exceptional talent and dedication. McGrath's journey is not just a tale of sporting excellence, it is also a deeply personal story of battling demons and overcoming personal struggles with heavy addictions. Paul McGrath was born in Greenford, Middlesex, to a Nigerian father and an Irish mother. McGrath's life was complicated from the start. His father left before he was born, and his mother, Betty, faced the daunting challenge of raising a child considered illegitimate and born of an interracial relationship in a society that was far less accepting than today. Fearing the judgment of her father and the community, Betty secretly went to London for Paul's birth, returning to Ireland only to have her baby forcibly taken and placed into foster care by members of the Catholic Crusade in Dublin. This difficult start led McGrath through various foster homes and care facilities around Dublin. At the age of five, after being deemed uncontrollable by one foster family, he briefly reunited with his mother before being placed into an orphanage. In a poignant twist, he was known as Paul Nuobilo for a time due to the admission forms requiring a father's name. Despite these challenges, Betty and McGrath's half-sister Okun maintained contact, visiting him and nurturing a bond that McGrath yearned to deepen. The longing for family and stability was a constant in McGrath's life, even as he navigated the complexities of his identity and the separation from his mother and sister. Yet, amidst the turmoil of his childhood, McGrath discovered a passion for sports, shining as a youth footballer for Dalkey United. However, just as his sporting talents began to emerge, McGrath faced another significant hurdle, a catastrophic mental breakdown that led to a year-long stay in St. John of God Psychiatric Hospital in Stillorgan. This period marked a low point for McGrath as he battled through a state that left him withdrawn from the world, a condition so severe that doctors doubted his recovery. Paul McGrath's professional football journey began with St. Patrick's Athletic, a club that would lay the foundation for his remarkable career. Making his debut on the 30th of August 1981 in a League of Ireland Cup clash against Shamrock Rovers at Richmond Park, McGrath quickly showed his potential by scoring the winner in his very next game during a Leinster Senior Cup clash. This early promise was noted by manager Charlie Walker, who had spotted McGrath among local talents, predicting that these players, including McGrath, would make the club proud by the season's end. At St. Patrick's Athletic, McGrath wasn't just another player. He became a sensation, earning the nickname the Black Pearl of Inchicore for his standout performances. His exceptional skill on the field led him to win the PFAI Players' Player of the Year award in 1982, a testament to his impact in the league and an early indicator of the footballing legend he was to become. McGrath's time at the Saints was marked by his ability to rise above challenges and showcase his talent, setting the stage for his move to bigger stages in football. In 1982, McGrath's career took a significant leap forward when he joined Manchester United, managed then by Ron Atkinson. Although he missed out on playing in the FA Cup victory over Brighton and Hove Albion the following year, McGrath soon secured his place as a central defender alongside Kevin Moran, ousting Gordon McQueen. His time at Manchester United was characterised by a promising start, especially during the 1985-86 season when United won their first ten league games, hinting at a possible league title that ultimately eluded them due to injuries and a fourth-place finish. McGrath's tenure at United also saw managerial changes that affected his position in the team. The arrival of Alex Ferguson in November 1986 initially didn't alter McGrath's status as a key player, but the following seasons brought challenges. Knee injuries and the signing of new players like Steve Bruce and Mal Donaghy made McGrath's place less secure, and his relationship with Ferguson began to strain, marking a turbulent end to his time at Manchester United. Despite interest from SSC Napoli in the late 1980s, McGrath's path led him to Aston Villa in August 1989 a move that would redefine his career. At Villa, McGrath showcased the best football of his life, even as he battled knee problems. The team finished a close second to Liverpool in his first season, an impressive feat that highlighted McGrath's defensive genius. Under managers including Josef Wenglos and later Ron Atkinson, McGrath became the backbone of Aston Villa's defence. 
His leadership and performances were instrumental in Villa's success, particularly in the early Premier League era where they finished as runners-up in the 1992-93 season. McGrath's influence and respect among his peers were cemented when he won the PFA Players' Player of the Year award at the end of that season, a fitting recognition for a player who had overcome so much and delivered performances that left an indelible mark on the club. Paul McGrath's international career with the Republic of Ireland stands as a testament to his exceptional talent and indomitable spirit, making significant contributions that would forever engrave his name in the annals of Irish football history. In 1990, McGrath played a pivotal role in a historic moment for Ireland as the team qualified for its first FIFA World Cup held in Italy. The tournament saw Ireland reach the quarter-finals, an achievement that exceeded expectations and captivated fans back home. McGrath was instrumental throughout the competition, participating in all of Ireland's matches and amassing a total of 480 minutes on the pitch. His consistent presence and formidable defence were crucial to Ireland's impressive campaign, highlighting his importance to the team. Following Mick McCarthy's retirement in 1992, McGrath stepped into a leadership role, captaining the national team four times. His leadership on the field was both an honour and a responsibility that McGrath took seriously, guiding his team through several crucial matches with his experience and understanding of the game. Perhaps one of McGrath's most memorable moments came during the 1994 World Cup in the United States. In Ireland's opening match against Italy, McGrath delivered what can only be described as a heroic defensive performance, helping secure a 1-0 victory against the favourites. Despite battling severe knee problems that plagued much of his career, McGrath's dedication never wavered. His commitment was on full display when he famously blocked a shot from the legendary Roberto Baggio with his face, a moment that encapsulates McGrath's willingness to put everything on the line for his team. Paul McGrath's personal struggles, particularly with alcoholism, which affected not only his health, but also his career. McGrath openly admitted to sometimes playing matches under the influence of alcohol, a revelation that underscores the depth of his struggles. McGrath's battle with alcoholism is a stark reminder of the pressures and challenges faced by professional athletes, where the physical and mental demands of the sport can lead to detrimental coping mechanisms. Adding to his challenges were McGrath's recurrent knee problems, which resulted in him undergoing eight surgeries throughout his career. Despite the pain and the surgeries, McGrath continued to play at the highest levels, demonstrating an almost superhuman tolerance for pain and a deep love for the game. McGrath's struggles and triumphs are candidly documented in his autobiography, Back from the Brink, co-written with journalist Vincent Hogan. The book, which won the inaugural William Hill Irish Sports Book of the Year in 2006, offers an honest and insightful look into McGrath's life, detailing his battles with addiction, his football career, and his journey towards recovery. It's a powerful narrative that resonates with many, offering hope and understanding to those facing similar challenges. Upon retiring, McGrath chose a quieter life in Monagia, County Wexford. However, his life post-retirement wasn't without its troubles. In 2004, McGrath found himself facing legal issues, charged with a breach of the peace. Despite these setbacks, McGrath's love for football remained leading him back to the sport as director of football for Waterford United in Ireland after a five-year hiatus. This role allowed him to remain connected to the game, contributing his vast experience and knowledge. McGrath also explored his musical talents, recording a cover version of Going Back by Jerry Goffin and Carole King in 2011. This venture into music saw him release an 11-track album, with profits benefiting the Acquired Brain Injury Foundation and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation of Ireland, showcasing McGrath's desire to give back to the community and support causes close to his heart. However, McGrath's life continued to be marked by personal challenges, as evidenced by his arrest in June 2013 over an alleged public order offence at a hotel in County Offaly. The incident which led to a court appearance in July, serves as a reminder of the ongoing struggles faced by McGrath in his personal life. Paul McGrath's personal life has been marked by profound loss and struggle, deeply intertwined with the challenges he faced both during and after his illustrious football career. The passing of McGrath's half-sister Okune in March 1994 from complications related to a rare blood disorder 
and the death of their mother, Betty McGrath Loth, in September 2020 at the age of 83, were significant personal losses for McGrath. These events added layers of emotional complexity to a life already challenged by personal demons and public scrutiny. Central to McGrath's narrative of struggle is his candid disclosure of battling with alcoholism and its severe impact on his mental health. McGrath has bravely shared his experiences with at least four major attempts to kill himself, with one particularly distressing incident occurring in November 1989 following his transfer from Manchester United to Aston Villa. Remarkably, McGrath returned to play shortly afterward, concealing his wounds under wristbands during a match where he helped Aston Villa secure a 6-2 victory over Everton. This episode underscores the immense personal battles McGrath fought even at the peak of his professional career, highlighting the often unseen struggles faced by public figures. The turbulence of McGrath's personal life also significantly affected his family relationships, leading to two divorces and the challenges of maintaining a stable family environment for his children. However, McGrath's journey toward recovery, particularly in the 2010s, illustrates a path of redemption and resilience. By gaining control over his drinking, McGrath began to rebuild his life and relationships, achieving a level of functionality he candidly describes as rough but markedly improved since 2014. Despite admitting to occasional alcohol consumption, McGrath's efforts to confront and manage his struggles represent a significant personal victory. As a father to six children and a grandfather to five, McGrath's legacy extends beyond the football field into the lives of his family. His story is one of incredible talent overshadowed at times by personal hardship, yet also marked by moments of triumph over adversity. McGrath's willingness to share his experiences openly has not only offered insight into his own life, but has also provided hope and encouragement to others facing similar challenges. Through his autobiography, interviews and public appearances, McGrath continues to impact the world around him, embodying the strength it takes to confront one's struggles and to forge a path toward healing and redemption.